Welcome to Ed Foodie. We had a cold front blow through last night, so I thought, let's make a pot of chili, Texas chili. Normally, a lot of people, when they make chili, they just go to the grocery store and they buy a box of something like this. Uh, Shelby's also has a, a, a very good chili mix. But the way I look at it, why pay $3 for one of these? If you already know what the ingredients are and most of these ingredients you should already have in your house. So we're gonna put this in the trash can. <laughs> and, <laughs> except there's no trash can. So what we're gonna do is then we're gonna actually pep it up a little bit and give you some of my secret spices and, and uh, ingredients that uh, really makes us a good hearty Texas chili. We're gonna start with one pound of, uh, what this is is a beef st for stir fry. Uh, just nice little chunks, st uh, strips of beef. And I have sprinkled it uh, with some tenderizer. Oh, and I've got about a uh, two teaspoons of oil. Fried beef has been cooking for about five minutes. It's nice and brown. That was a pound. Now I'm gonna add a pound. What I've got here is uh, ground sirloin. I think it's 90% lean. And then I've got a uh, half of onion chopped. This is not in the witch fowler recipe, by the way. So if you use this, you wouldn't have to use the onion in it. You could add chopped uh, green bell pepper if you wanted to, or jalapeno. So now we'll cook this until the onions are nice and tender and the ground sirloin is uh, as well. Okay, so now we've got our, our ground beef and our steak. cooked and what I've done is drain this very well and patted it dry with a, a, a paper towel because I don't like all the grease in there. So now to add the spices that will equal what was in the um, Wick Fowler or the Shelby's uh, chili packet. I've got one and a half teaspoons of paprika and I use the smoked paprika. This is actually from the, the Wick Fowler packet. And it's uh, two teaspoons of dehydrated onion. You could use just your dried chopped onion. And it's also got a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. One and a half teaspoons of cumin and a half a teaspoon of oregano. The uh, Wick Fowler pack comes with three fourths of a cup of chili powder. I'm only gonna use a half a cup. And then last but not least of the spices, the cayenne pepper, and this is what gives you one alarm, two alarm, or three alarm chili. Uh, the Whip Fowler packet comes with two teaspoons. I'm gonna use one, and maybe even a little bit less. And if we need more, we can add it. Then the last few steps for the chili packet, one can of tomato sauce. And then what the packet calls for is one can of water or eight ounces of water. I'm gonna use eight ounces of tomato juice instead, or in this case, I got V8, so I'm gonna use V8. So the water would normally give it a nice liquid consistency that you can uh, cook down, but the tomato juice will make it more flavorful. So this is basically it as far as what you would buy in the store in the packet. Now, I'm going to add some of my special ingredients that I think makes my chili really outstanding. Uh, and there's about four or five special ingredients. And if you want to know these, you can send $5 to Ed Foodie. No, I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll give it to you for free. I add in uh, one can of Rotel tomatoes. 
And I'm just using the original recipe, nothing extra hot. And I use the liquid as well. These next two ingredients, uh, to me, really make it extra special. I got a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I know it sounds crazy, but I mean, it makes it really, really good. The next ingredient, I've got some uh, dark chocolate. This is 70% cocoa. Um, I normally like to use 80 or 85% cocoa, but make sure it's very dark chocolate. Here I got one pretty big square. And I also put in, just for extra uh, beef flavor, uh, one beef bouillon cube. I want to add two bay leaves. These are really huge bay leaves. So that's it. I'm going to cook this down for maybe 20 minutes, let all these flavors sink in. Uh, if you want it a little bit more liquidy after 20 minutes, you could add uh, some more tomato juice. So let's let this simmer for 20 minutes and we'll come back and we'll taste some great Texas chili. The chili's been cooking about uh, 10 minutes. Now to, if you want it to look exactly like on the Wick Fowler recipe, there's a maza packet in there, which is basically a like a Mexican corn flour, I think. Uh, it's two tablespoons, so you can get two tablespoons of masa flour, mix it in a quarter cup of warm water, stir it in, make sure it's mixed well, and then pour that in to the chili. Stir that in. And then what I also like to do for the last 10 minutes of cooking, is add in about four ounces of your favorite beer. I like to use a little bit of a dark beer. Uh, Shiner Bach works great. This time I happen to have Ziekenbach. So we're gonna cook that for just about 10 minutes. We'll let that flour uh, thicken things up a little bit and then we'll be ready to eat oh excuse me welcome back the chili's been cooking and we're ready to serve it up I like to let it cook turn the heat off and really let it sit for an hour or two and then right before I'm ready to eat I just warm it up a little bit we'll start just with the these are pretty big bowls so we'll just do that much now, usually when you go get chili, you know, the first question they'll ask you is, do you want beans? Most people in Texas don't want beans, but if you do, I put them in now and I use red kidney beans. That's enough. We put our chili on top. Then the next question is, onions or cheese? Or onions, do you want onions and or cheese? So we have fresh chopped onions, sprinkle a little bit on there. Mmm, smell cool. Yeah. Uh, I always like a little bit of grated cheddar cheese. Now some of the different ways you can have chili, you can have chili in a bowl like a lot of people. Frito pie, you put a couple scoops of Fritos on the bottom of the bowl and then you put chili on top. I like chili just right on top of a flour tortilla. Roll it up and eat it. Of course, down in Texas, everything tastes good in a flour tortilla. Um, I'm gonna top it off with a little bit of fresh chopped cilantro. And then I'm going to top it with a, a little squiggle of sour cream. Um, I put it in an old mustard thing, so it's, it's really not mustard, it's sour cream. Like 
I don't put it to me. And then watch yours. Because <laughs> I don't want the fresh jalapenos. My favorite way to have chili is on top of homemade mashed potatoes. I know that sounds a little strange. But, you know, those in Cincinnati put it on spaghetti or macaroni. Some people put it on rice, but not in Texas. I just happen to like it on mashed potatoes. Let's give it a little taste. Mm. Oh my goodness. This is so good. This, I, if you do this, it'll be one of your top 10 chilies you've ever had. The beer just gives it a little bit of bitterness. Uh, cinnamon, just oh, a little bit of cinnamon just really brings up all the flavors. So Catherine, would you like to try? Mm. It's really good on a nice cold day or rainy afternoon. So if you like this chili, please give me a thumbs up, like it, and subscribe to Ed Foodie on YouTube. Thank you very much. Sour cream. Um, I put it in an old mustard thing, so it's, it's really not mustard, it's sour cream. I hope this works. Pardon me for the noises. <laughs>